Welcome to Speak English Podcast with your host, Georgiana. The podcast that will help you to speak English fluently with no grammar and no textbooks. Hi, everybody. I am Georgiana, your English teacher and founder of SpeakEnglishPodcast.com. My mission is to help you to speak English fluently. Last week, we started learning how to write a formal business email in English. Today, we will learn how to close an email with a final comment and greeting. I will also give you an example of a formal email that you can use in different situations. With a point of view story, you will improve your grammar. Sending a formal or professional email in English can always be challenging. So I've decided to dedicate two episodes to this topic. If you haven't yet heard the last week's episode, I invite you to do so before listening to today's lesson. Okay, let's get started. After giving or asking for information, it's time to close with a remark. Here are some examples. This is how you could respond when you are answering a customer query. If you require any further information, please do not hesitate to contact me. Use this phrase to let the other person know that you are eager to hear from them soon. I am looking forward to hearing from you soon. This way, you encourage the other person to contact you if they need to do so. Let's hear some more closing phrases. Thank you in advance for your reply or your help. Please let me know if you have other questions or concerns. Please don't forget to... Please get back to me by Monday. Please get back to me before Monday. Please get back to me soon. I appreciate your prompt reply. I hope to speak with you soon. I hope to hear from you soon. I hope to see you soon. We will end our email with a complimentary close followed by your name. Examples Best regards Best wishes Kind regards Regards Sincerely Thank you Enjoy the weekend Have a good weekend Have a good day. Have a good Friday. Have a safe flight. Enjoy your trip. Best wishes. Best regards. All these can be used interchangeably as a way to pay your respects to the person who is going to read the email. I typically sign my emails with best regards. However, sometimes I use regards or enjoy the weekend. After best regards, I add my name. Here's an email example that you can use in different situations. Dear Mr. John, thank you for your interest in our services. With reference to your request regarding a new SIM card for your cell phone, I would like to inform you that it should be made available to you within the next 24 hours. I would like to inform you that we have already delivered the card to the carrier and you will receive it during the day. Also, I would really appreciate it if you could respond to this email today confirming your billing information. I'm sorry to ask you for this on such short notice, but it is in your best interest to do this as soon as possible to avoid any delays. If you require any further information, please do not hesitate to contact me.
Best regards, Tom. I really hope that these episodes on writing a formal or professional email will be very helpful. Get the transcript on my website, speakenglishpodcast.com. Now let's move on to the next section. I will tell you a short story more than one time. Every time, I'll change a grammar point. For example, I can change the tense or the person. This way, you'll intuitively notice the changes. Let's start. Kelly was looking for a job and wanted to send an email to a very prestigious company. But she had a big problem. She didn't know how to write a formal email. So she began to research online how to write a formal email. She learned how to structure the email and use some key phrases to give a professional touch. After a week, Kelly finally managed to write her first formal email. She sent it to the company. And she enclosed her CV. Kelly was very proud of herself and even bragged about it to her friends. The next day, Kelly received an email from the company. She was confident that she had made a good impression on the company. After all, she had an impressive CV. To her surprise, the company's message was brief and very embarrassing for Kelly. It turned out that Kelly attached a picture of herself lying on the beach instead of her CV. How embarrassing! Poor Kelly had to discard that company because of that. Since then, she pays great attention when sending an email. She reads the email 100 times before sending it and also makes sure she encloses the correct file. Let's listen to the same story, but now in the plural. Kelly and Tom were looking for a job and wanted to send an email to a very prestigious company. But they had a big problem. They didn't know how to write a formal email. So they began to research online how to write a formal email. They learned how to structure the email and use some key phrases to give a professional touch. After a week, Kelly and Tom finally managed to write their first formal email. They sent it to the company and enclosed their CV. Kelly and Tom were very proud of themselves and even bragged about it to their friends. The next day, they received an email from the company. They were confident that they had made a good impression on the company. After all, they had an impressive CV. To their surprise, the company's message was brief and very embarrassing for Kelly and Tom. It turned out that they had attached a picture of themselves lying on the beach instead of their CV. How embarrassing! Poor Kelly and poor Tom. They had to discard that company because of it. Since then, they paid great attention when sending an email. They read the email 100 times before sending it and also make sure they enclose the correct file. Okay, it's the end of this short lesson. As you can see, just by changing a point of view of the story, you can learn grammar intuitively. This is one of the techniques that I use in my premium courses. I recommend you take a look at speakenglishpodcast.com slash courses. Okay, this is the end of this episode. Remember to listen to it several times.
It will help you with your English. See you soon. Bye-bye. Did you enjoy today's episode? Get the transcript now at speakenglishpodcast.com.